Rain. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize we were starting. Uh, hi, I'm Rain. And I'm Katie. And together we're Wicked Rain Studio. Uh, so today we're going to talk about corsets and patterning corsets. You can find lots of little uh, corset patterns online really easily if you just search it, but they're all really tiny. And uh, Rain has a really great method for expanding that and making it fit your measurements exactly. So what's really interesting is when you Google corset patterns, you'll see those tiny ones. And a lot of times those are actual historic drawings. It used to be that you could create a patent for your corset and you would have to have the drawing of all the pattern pieces as a part of that patent. You can radial project that pattern up to scale, but that's not gonna fit you. That'll fit someone from 1880. A lot of us aren't 1880 sized anymore. And so this is a really great technique for proportionally taking a pattern from an older time and making it fit your measurements. And what measurements do we need for that? You only need five measurements to make this corset. You need chest, waist, and high hip around the hip bones. And then you need from the armpit to the waist, and then from the waist to the high hip. Seems simple enough. Let's get started. Start by cutting out all of the pieces of the corset pattern. You'll need to print the pattern out twice to get the left and right sides. Tape all of the pieces together along the seam. One side will be inside out to get the left versus right sides. You now have a tiny paper corset. Draw the waistline the smallest part of the corset. Draw the bust line along the widest part of the bust. Draw the hip line where the corset gets widest at the bottom. Try to keep all the lines as parallel as possible. Cut your tiny paper corset in half and solidify your lines. Number the pattern pieces so that you can keep track of the order they belong in. Cut apart one half of your paper corset. Measure the length of the bust along the line you drew. Write this number down. In mine, the bust measures three and three quarters of an inch. Do the same for the waist and the hip. Subtract two inches from your own bust, waist, and hip measurements. This is so your corset has tension when you lace it up. Then divide these numbers by two. Now we can determine the proportional factor of each measurement. Divide your half bust by the paper's half bust. In my case, that's 18.75 divided by 3.75. My proportional factor for my bust measurement is five. Do the same for the waist and hip. As you can see, the factor is similar for all three measurements, but not identical. You 
use an L-shaped ruler to draw a large right angle. This is the top and center front of your corset. Look at the paper corset you have made and you can estimate how far down from the top your bust line sits. It is usually roughly three inches, but this will be different for each design and you may want your corset to be higher or lower. For mine, I have chosen three inches. Using your L-shaped ruler, draw a square line at your bust. Subtract three inches from your armpit to waist measurement. Measure down from the bust that amount and draw a square line. This is your waist line. Draw your hip line at your waist to high hip measurement. The center front seam of a corset is usually straight. The vertical line we drew is going to be our center front line. Measure the bust line of the first pattern piece. Then multiply that number by your bust proportional factor, in my case, five. Draw a point that far out from the center front along your bust line. In my case, that is 3.75 inches. Measure the waistline and multiply by your waist proportional factor. Draw a point that far out from the center front along your waistline. Measure the hip line and multiply by your hip proportional factor. Draw a point that far out from the center front along your hip line. Connect the dots you have just created, trying to match the style of curves from your tiny paper pattern piece. To determine the top curve, there is artistic license allowed. I picked a curve that I thought was flattering, and I also looked to the pattern. In this pattern, the center front of the corset drops down to the bust line and then curves upward. This tiny paper pattern actually goes down pretty far in the center front. I don't like my corsets to drop very far from the hip, so I'm going to shorten mine a little. I've decided to make mine 2.5 inches below my hip line. I used my see-through ruler to figure out the angle of the bottom of the pattern piece. The next four pieces are not going to be as straightforward as the center front piece. Now we have to look at how each piece's bust, waist, and hip line up against each other vertically. In pattern piece two, all three lines are roughly centered upon each other. Move over from the first piece you drew and start to plot out the second one. In this case, I'm drawing the bust line first using the same proportional factor as before. Then I draw a center line straight down from the middle of the bust. I will center the waist and hip measurements along this line. Then I connect the dots like before, keeping the quality of the curve similar to my tiny pattern. top, match the height of the seam of piece one, and then follow the angle of the top of the corset. Do the same at the bottom. For piece three, the left side of the pattern is almost straight, with the bottom a little further out. 
so I'm keeping the bust and waist starting points on top of each other and moving the hip starting point one half inch to the left. Once again, measure each line and multiply them by their assigned proportional factors. Connect the dots as before. Line up the top and bottom edges of the corset like we did in piece two. In piece four, the left side of the bust and waist are the same, but the right side of the waist and hip are the same. Move over to give yourself room and measure the lines as before. I draw in the bust points first and then square down on the left side to draw the waistline. After the waist is drawn, I square down on the right this time to begin the hip line. Connect your dots and soften the curves. five is mostly straight on the left edge. I've decided for ease of build to straighten that side and make all of the lines square out from that straight line. At the top of piece five, the corset begins to drastically curve upward. Piece six is the center back and is a straight line on the right side. I give myself plenty of room to move backwards in this one. I start all of my lines from the right side and measure over to the left. Connect all of the dots and continue the curve from the top of piece five. It should square out by the time you get to center back. Here are all my full-sized pattern pieces with their corresponding tiny pieces. At this point, you can plot your bone placements. If you are recreating a historic pattern, there will often be bone placements visible on the pattern pieces, and you can copy them onto your full-sized pattern. For styles like this, I personally like a lightly boned corset, and will put a bone along each seam with an extra bone along each side of the grommets in center back. Next, I cut out my pattern and true up the seams. Making sure that my bust, waist, and hip lines match, I walk my pattern and create notches. Also at this point, I clean up the top and bottom edges to make sure the lines are smooth. I do not add seam allowance to my patterns. I prefer to do this as I cut things out. You can add seam allowance at this point if you choose. So there we have it, we have a finished corset. Um, Katie, you wanna show those pattern pieces? So this is the front and side front. I also made the same pattern for my friend who has a bust that is 10 inches bigger than mine. And so you can see how the patterns are the same shape but proportionally fit the two different bodies. Um, this technique is 
usable at every size. But that's all we've got for today. Yeah, uh, if you want to see a video on how to take proper measurements, we're going to put a link to the one that we made down in the description box below. But uh, like this video if you uh, had a good time. And subscribe! Bye! Universal technique available like blah 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 So, um, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I also did like a weird like, <laughs> we're so awkward. <laughs>